Water, the primary building block of life. We all need it, and we all use it. But once we use it, where does it go? What happens to the wastewater? This guy has the answer. My name is Alan Coriel. I'm the superintendent of the wastewater treatment plant for the city of Montrose. The city's wastewater treatment plant is the final stop for all of the sewage from the city as well as septage from the county. Allen oversees the entire wastewater treatment plant to make sure that the plant operates effectively and efficiently, with nearly 18,000 city residents and counting, all creating wastewater every day. That adds up to a lot of water to treat. This plant was built in 1984. At that time, it was designed for 2.88 million gallons per day. As of October last year, we expanded to 4.32 million gallons per day. Right now, we are treating approximately 2.55 million gallons a day. Wastewater treatment is an important process simply because it removes most of the pathogenic bacteria in the water and makes it clean to put back into the river so that we can have water reuse downstream. Downstream of us, I believe the first place they would draw water out would be possibly in Grand Junction, but further down we have Lake Powell where they were a lot of water recreation, so it is important for us to clean the water. Wastewater entering into the plant is called influent, and the Headworks building is the first stop for the incoming influent. First, the water enters the bar screen room. This chamber houses a giant screen which strains out all of the trash from the influent. Although the bacteria and biosolids in wastewater will be digested and broken down during the treatment process, trash will not decay, and it could serve as a safe haven for harmful bacteria to hide. So all trash must be removed early in the process. This is the bar screen room, part of the Headworks building, and the bar screen does run 24-7. We have that large plastic bag for the trash. The trash goes in there, it's dewatered and goes in there, and the bag is to contain the odors. And once it is full, we seal it off, and then it is taken to the landfill. After removing the large trash, the influent goes through grit removal. Grit is considered to be inorganic compounds, like sand, coffee grounds, eggshells, and other things which are not caught in the bar screen. These materials also disrupt the treatment process. This is the grit removal, and what it is is we have an aerated grit chamber, and we aerate the grit. It's already influent coming in, and the grit settles, and the organics flow on by. And then the grit is pumped up to here into the grit classifier where it's dewatered and dumped into the garbage, and we also haul that to the landfill. After grit removal, the water is almost ready to leave the Headworks building. This right here is the end of the Headworks building. This is where we measure the influent flow coming into the plant. Measuring the flow of the wastewater helps the crew stay on top of the treatment process. For efficiency, the plant is running with only a portion of the machinery working. If the wastewater flow rises above the normal capacity, the crew can activate more machinery in order to accommodate the increase in influent. Wastewater came from the Headworks building, comes into here to the screw pumps, and these screw pumps are large augers, and they lift the wastewater from down here and drop it up there and then from there it sits and goes to any of the three oxidation ditches. The screw pumps are the central processing hub of the treatment plant. Many liquids and biosolids will return here again and again in order to be fully processed and treated. From the screw pumps the wastewater goes into the oxidation ditches. We have three of them. Currently we have two operating. And in the oxidation ditches we have three rotors. And the rotors aerate the water, makes it into an aerobic process, because what we use is aerobic bacteria, and all we're really doing is creating an environment for them to make them happy. And they feed on the incoming pathogen bacteria. The oxidation ditches are the first step in the chemical and biological breakdown of the bacteria in the biosolids and the water. From here, the influent is sent to giant tanks called clarifiers. These are the clarifiers. We have three of them. And the clarifiers, the overflow from the oxidation ditches go into the clarifier. They go into the center trough. Then they are, the water spread out and hits the baffles. And the sludge settles to the bottom. The bottom of the clarifier is roughly 15 feet. And it's a conical-shaped bottom. We have scrapers along the bottom that continually 
scrape the settled sludge into a hopper. The clarifier is a pivotal point in the process because the suspended biosolids, called liquid sludge, begins separating from the clarified water. At this point, the water is ready for final treatment, but the sludge must be retreated over and over again in order to fully oxidize the solids and remove as many harmful microbes as possible. From the clarifier, the sludge will most likely end up back in the screw pumps to be redistributed into the oxidation ditches again, only to wind up back in the clarifier. This cycle is called the activated sludge process and is often repeated many times over the course of several days. So who says when the sludge is ready to move on? This gal. My name is Robin Sterrett. My position here is lab analyst. I've been here for approximately three years. Robin runs the laboratory tests on the wastewater throughout the plant, from the headworks building to the final stage of water purification. She ensures that each process is working as it should and that the treated water meets or exceeds environmental safety standards. In order to determine when the sludge is ready to be processed, Robin runs one specific test called the settleometer. These are the settleometers. I do them twice a week and they tell us how fast our sludge is settling in the ditch. The results will determine where the sludge will go next, depending on how well the sludge separates from the water. Once the sludge thickens enough, like the beaker on the right, the crew will know that it's time to pull the sludge out of this activated sludge cycle and send it to the digester building. This is the next step in its treatment. This process is called wasting. Behind me is our digester building. Behind the concrete we have four cells and the cells are aerated by three 100 horsepower blowers only one of which is running. It usually runs 24 hours a day. We do shut it off at times to also go anoxic. And the anoxic helps with the nitrogen cycle and it also helps raise the pH a little bit back up to seven because in the digester process, the pH does drop sometimes to right around six. The digester literally digests and breaks down as much of the remaining pathogenic bacteria as possible in order to prepare the sludge for its final treatment, the centrifuge. In the centrifuge room, powerful machines spin the liquid sludge and with the aid of chemical polymers, much of the remaining water is removed from the biosolids. This creates a dried sludge as well as a liquid byproduct called centrate. The newly dried sludge then travels up a conveyor into a truck to be shipped to a composting facility in Delta. The centrate is returned back to the screw pumps to go through the whole process again so that the water can be treated and released. So what happens to the actual water in this process? To answer that, we have to revisit the clarifiers. Because the sludge settles to the bottom of the clarifiers, the water on top is clear of any suspended solids. That means there's nowhere for the surviving bacteria to hide. And so, the water must undergo one final purification process before it is ready to be released into the Uncompagre River. That process is the UV chamber. Inside this building is our ultraviolet disinfection. We have two channels. We have four banks in each channel. And it is flow paced so that when the flow comes up, more banks of lights do come on. When the flow drops down, they do go off. UV light kills bacteria by destroying its DNA. By doing that, the bacteria cannot reproduce, and so it cannot do any further harm. The purified water, called effluent, is then released into the outflow pond. In this effluent pond, when the river was higher years ago and against this bank, we used to have trout that would come up into this pond and live. They lived here year-round. One final sample is taken from this outflow pond to ensure the water quality of the effluent going into the river. This test compares this water to the influent coming into the plant at the very beginning of the process. We have about 99% removal, which means when you look at the influent coming in and how dirty it was compared to the effluent and what's going out, we remove 99% of everything that was in that water. From the outflow pond, the purified water is released into the Uncompagre River so that other people, plants, and animals can use it downstream. The wastewater treatment plant offers tours to anyone who is interested. 
For more information about the plant, please visit www.cityofmontrose.org.